All right, let's break down this orb shader I made to reflect the player's in-game resources. It's composed by three main resources such as health, energy and the player's will. Each one with its material based on the same shader with their own parameters, but sharing one of them. A shader global parameter that reflects the player's will and opens and closes the indicator on these three materials at the same time. I layered some textures with some shaders like background refraction and rim refraction to help this to get integrated into the world scene. And then some subtraction to boost contrast along some glass highlights. So, I made this document to help me understand the shader once I get back to it on the future and, by the way, make this video more visually understandable. First, and the most important, is that we have to create some black and white masks to work with. In this case, the oval shape that is shared between all these resources. And the goal is to create this mask with these RGB values that can be expanded or shrunken dynamically in base of the player's will value. Well, this is the most difficult to understand part of the video, but I need to sort it first. So don't close the tab yet, hold on. We will need a bit of trigonometry here, but don't worry. I'm not good at math, believe me. But once you get how this works and how to generate shapes, a new world opens for you. So I definitely recommend to dig into it, as there is plenty of good tutorials about and play with some web pages like graftoy.com or desmos.com slash calculator so in a nutshell we need to generate a parabolic shape a parabolic shape that gets the uv coordinates and powers the x and y values along some custom parameters like the oval aperture the oval angle and the global wheel value Now you'll see once you have it, it's quite easy to generate the stuff by using just addition and subtraction methods. So these are the results when you pass positive and negative UV coordinates on the x-axis. This must be stepped so it's just black or white output and note there is a 0.5 offset to place it on the center. Now we have those masks. We can generate a black and white border by just adding or removing an oval border thickness parameter to the right or the left. Then we also need to get a gradient mask of it to use it later, so a smooth step passing an oval top blur parameter is done to achieve this effect. Ok, that's it, let's make the RGB mask once for all. A main mask on our channel, just add right and left masks. A border, same stuff, just add both borders. A sort of ambient occlusion mask, just multiply both gradients and add the R channel. Now we have to separate everything depending on which is the resource attribute on each material and this is made by switching a type integer parameter and then by bringing this red channel of the oval mask, which is like the main mask, we can add it to a stepped half of the texture depending on this type or we can just leave it in case it's just the wheel resource. Of course, its material will have a percent float uniform that we will use to mask the amount value by stepping it by the UVY axis and then subtracting it from the whole mask. But at this point, this percent mask would be kind of too sudden and wouldn't look like liquid at all, so we create another mask that would act as a highlight by stepping the y-axis and then subtracting an inverted smooth step, adding some height. It's clear, huh? Next, it should be good to smooth the edges a little bit and give the whole thing a bit of depth. So we create a couple gradient texture masks and multiply them by some colors to avoid flatness and make more sort of spherical looking at the end.
Now, let's jump to the funny part and let's make the liquid content and animate it. We need to manipulate the UVs. In this case, I'm creating three UVs and offsetting them by multiplying time by some speed values. This will make those UVs to move in different directions and speeds. I mean, the main reason for all of this is to distort those UVs, giving it a feeling of a refracting liquid that is moving, you know, quite common on many RPGs. So I made an RGB texture with some noise on the R channel, some speckles on the green channel that will act as bubbles, and another already distorted noise on the blue channel. So if you multiply those moving UVs by these textures as its UV, you will get this distortion or refraction effect. Also, you can do whatever, like distorting this channel by adding other animated UVs to the previous distorted ones and such. Options are unlimited here. We can get this splat tileable channel map and offset it by another animated UV, then distort it with the noise channel, and it makes the effect that the liquid is thick and lumpy. Then we can compose all of this stuff quite easily, by passing the main color uniform and multiplying it by the animated first noise, then add some bubbles and multiply it by the bubbles color. And finally offset the noise add so it goes down in the y-axis, then multiply it by the bubbles color. And now everything is alive, it's offsetting and distorting as we wished. And finally, let's put all of this together by processing the final color. Get the color and add the edge we created previously. Multiply that inner mask. Add that top sign mask multiplied by the main color. We need more refraction that comes from this liquid instead from the glass textures. So here's the code. As you can see, it's the same principle we are using for distorting UVs, but this time it gets the screen texture and the screen UV, so it reacts with the background instead. Ok, let's move. As the material will be split in three parts, a sort of ambient occlusion helps to not look that flat, so just multiply it by the blue channel of the oval draw. Now we create a line that divides those three materials by turning black what is the green channel of the oval draw. This means that the line of the material on top will cover the other ones, so we are fine. Stack these three materials and yeah, we have an interesting orb shader that can be tweaked in many many ways and reacts instantly with the character attributes. That's it folks, in the next video I'm going to cover another absolutely different topic, like it's the first iteration on sound effects and this background music. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and see you in the next one. Cheers!